Well, greetings, friends, and welcome to Now Hiring, a podcast about trends in staffing, recruiting, and talent. I'm Scott Motmany, and I'd like to thank Sepal founder and CEO, Samir Penakalapati, along with his trustee CMO, Andy Weiss, uh, who are both here leading us through what we all hope are some very thoughtful conversations about our industry. And in this episode, gentlemen, we're going to explore with all of our wonderful viewers and listeners uh, the world of generative AI. It's a hot topic right now. It has been for a while and it will continue to be. How can it help or hurt your business, though? That's what people really want to know. What does it mean on a practical level? So, Andy, before we get some practical tips and examples from Samir, I just wanted to ask you from the perspective of someone that is knee deep right now, in an AI business project along with Samir. I wanted to ask, how do you find it hurting or helping, making your day better or worse so far from a high level? And what should people yeah. expect to extract from it? It's got a great question. I think from a practical standpoint, the way we're looking at using AI on a day-to-day -day basis is how can we have it plus up the things that we're already doing? It's very easy to get wrapped up in kind of the bright, shiny object of what it could potentially do. But the real work is in how does it amplify or magnify the things that we're already doing? So not relying solely on the AI to do the work, but how can it make us better, faster, smarter, and inform the human side of what we're doing? And so I think, Samira, that's some of the things that you've been thinking about from a business standpoint and also from a staffing standpoint, like that that human kind of component and uh, and bringing that in alongside, you know, the, the the capabilities of Gen AI and what it can do. So what do you, from a macro standpoint and from a staffing industry standpoint, what are you seeing and where do you see some of the best use cases coming to light? Generative AI is defying misconception that it's going to hurt the staffing industry. In fact, it's, it's going to do opposite. It's going to help tremendously to improve the way the industry works. A lot of things we talk about, you know, how do we improve the productivity of the recruiters? How do we get access to the information and data much more smoothly uh, to the hiring managers and also generate required an analytics about the whole talent availability and, and talent churn, the skills availability, all of that information will be extremely valuable for the companies, the hiring managers who operate the need of hiring for the businesses. So, so yeah. Who's your thinking about that? Is there like, hey, here's the ideal state of where a, a software platform like like Sepal comes in along with AI, along with the, the stuff that the recruiter has been doing kind of on a more traditional day to day basis? Like, is there this perfect blend and an ideal state that we're trying to arrive at? Yeah. You know, if you broadly classify the recruiter time or they just you, you segregate the recruiters you know segment that used to be traditionally 60 percent of their time goes towards sourcing the candidates and then 20 percent of the time goes towards really managing candidates getting hold of the candidates you know goes in between there's choppy communications between candidate and recruiter and the real 20% is when they actually spend time and building the relationship with the candidates, understanding their needs, mapping their needs with the business and the requirements of the job, and actually creating a huge value because end of the day, that 20% of the time is what is more valuable than all the other things. Mm -hmm. But it, it is a necessary need of actually finding those candidates before you talk to anybody, right? Yeah. Generative so, AI is going to help tremendously to, to compress that 80% of the time and leave most, more time to the recruiters and the candidates in between so that actually they can better understand their expertise, the business needs, and map that appropriately and, and tremendously improve the productivity of the business because you have the right person who hired for the job. So it's not like it's, hey, Here's a tool. Here's a technology tool, and you know that you're going to spend more time in it. The idea is it's going to help you off 
offload some of that so that you can spend more time with your candidates on those relationships with your clients and customers? Is that? That's fair. Yeah, like for example, I will give you a few simple yeah. examples, right? And used to be the recruiter's expertise defined by how efficiently they build the search strings. That's that's how they used to define how efficient the recruiter, the way how they build the search strings, boolean boolean strings for you know searching the candidates. Now with this generative AI, with a few instructions, it could probably build the most efficient search string for you to search for appropriate candidates through internal database or like through external job portals. And now that puts everybody into the same level playing field in terms of, you know, the building that such strength. Can and that the- work in reverse, Samir, as well? Like, can we use Boolean strings to create better job descriptions and maybe pull words together and word clouds and whatnot to create a job description that's actually going to attract more candidates? Yeah, absolutely, right? You want to be very concise and a very neutral job. Like in, in a lot of talks about, you know, a lot of these job descriptions are like, you know, the bias, like the built-in bias, like unconscious bias built into these job descriptions that now with the generative AI, you can build very neutral job descriptions and they are very concise and clear and set the expectations of the candidates and a lot of times, you know, the job descriptions were written by uh, the hiring managers who are not trained to create these neutral, efficient way of, you know, building the jobs descriptions. Now, with the given the content that whatever uh, the requirements you have, you as a chart, you know, either chart GPT, Google Gemini, or other things, other LLMs, uh, you ask them to create the concise job description with a very neutral voice that you are not unconsciously building a bias in, in generating the job descriptions. So way. yeah, so the, the recruiters are using or are starting to use more AI, but that's that's just one side of the equation. Like the candidates are probably using it too. So how do we like what's the what's the ethical balance? Like what's the like how do we how, as a staffing firm as a recruiter, how do you like juggle the the knowledge or that a candidate you know, hopefully that it's a real candidate that you're talking to, which could be getting harder and harder, but also that they are who they, they're representing themselves to be on paper and interview questions and stuff, because you and I could be having this, this conversation and I could, you know, I've seen demos of things where you could be asking me a question and you know, an AI tool is listening to it and giving me potential responses, either based on my background or what I think you want to hear. So how do we kind of balance that? What are your thoughts on? Yeah, you, you're right. And they have these options equally available. And then chart GPT or any other generative AI platforms don't discriminate one against the other. But, but I, you know, when we, you would see a lot more uh, tools out there will be available in the near term about, um, you know, dealing with these kind of challenges, right? For an example, you would, like, if you have a specific job description for a specific client, for a specific industry, then the recruiter's knowledge can be utilized to really ask specific questions that are not, like, mimicked by these LLMs Mm -hmm. because they don't have this information in advance. So there's one way is to ask the question specific to it, but then those preparations can be done with the help of an LLM. So a recruiter can ask those questions with the help of LLMs and their, with their, their own specific knowledge about the industry and the combination of that kind of, kind of intelligent way to bring those questions and get the information from the candidate. And you could do that, you know. I mean, I'm not saying it's going to be a foolproof solution one way or the other, but I think there are ways you could still manage it. But, you know, I'm sure there are ways and tools that helps to even detect who's the real person and how are they doing it. And, you know, this is just, we're just starting this this expansion of the AIs and who knows, we're going to see a lot of things that's going to change in the near future. And AIs are, LLMs and AIs are, 
you know, evolving itself every three months. And <laughs> this is something that we have never seen. This, this speed of evolution of this technology. And uh, I think it's going to be a fun ride and we're going to see a lot more things with our time. It's super exciting. And Scott, Scott, before we close out, just in a, in a word, Samir, like what's your, what's your one hope that AI will bring to, to staffing in a, in a word or a phrase? Here is, I want to say it, right? And if it's not about the AI is going to hurt the industry, not using AI is going to hurt the industry and, and more importantly, the companies. Yeah. So I'm saying you adopt AI and you find a solution that fits to your industry and to your business. And then be, you know, take advantage of the, the capabilities that AI brings in. So the, the, the challenge that you're going to have, the companies will have with not adopting AI. And if the, the companies that who adopts AI uses responsibly, and I think will lead the pack and they will do take advantage and, and grow this business tremendously. So mm-hmm. not using AI is going to hurt more than okay. using AI. Samir, you've been a great evangelizer for AI for a long time now and leading this discussion for a long time. So although you say it's just starting now, it really started a while ago and it's just now accelerating and blowing up. So something tells me this will not be our last conversation on this podcast about artificial intelligence and generative AI in particular. So I want to thank you all for the time and thank everyone for joining us. And you can do so on Spotify, find us on YouTube, wherever you can find us. And we ask you to like and subscribe and we thank you for it. Until the next time, we're now hiring.